Dear students, in this lecture, we shall learn about the cubic cost functions, which is an economic example, which is based upon the cubic functions. Now, in this example, we can see that uh, a cubic cost function is given in a symbolic manner, where the coefficients are A, B, C, and D, as we can expect. And the independent variable is Q. Now, this A, C, and D, all these three coefficients, they are positive. Only one of them, that is B, is negative. Once this happens, it should follow this condition. This cubic function should follow this condition. And for that, we can simply put the values of A, C, and B and see if it holds. But before we do that, let us see how will it look like. Such a cost function that follows these parametric restrictions will appear in this way that it will be having an, uh, a decreasing trend in the beginning and then increasing trend. Or in more proper words, it will be increasing at a decreasing rate firstly and then it will be increasing at an increasing rate. Now, let us see that how this condition can be verified. We are resorting to the same function as we saw that A was positive, it was 2, and B is negative, extracting the values from this function, and 4 and 5, that is C and D, both are positive. Now we should apply this condition simply by putting the values 3, the value of A is put, the value of C is substituted, and we have replaced B with its value as well. Now, this can be easily simplified, the answer of which is this, and we can say with surety that 24 is greater than 9. So, this condition is fulfilled once if the parametric restrictions of the coefficients are met. Now, taking a more uh, real-life example uh, from economic literature, and this is about the electric power generating plant and its cost function was estimated and it had the cubic specification and that exactly looked like this. Now if we observe this cubic function, the value of A is not positive, it is minus 1. The value of B is not, uh, it's not negative, rather it is positive and the value of C is not positive, rather it is negative. And the value of D is, however, positive. And we have compared actually these values with that uh, desired set of uh, parametric restrictions where only the second, that is the coefficient of the square term, was negative and the remaining were positive. Once if we violate this condition, what happens? Uh, quite understandably, we should apply that condition and see if that condition holds. So, by uh, putting the value into this uh, test, we shall get the results and we can see the results show that the condition does not hold anymore. Now, this is the, uh, the rejection of that condition and evidently due to the uh, violation of the parametric restrictions of A, B, C and D, it happens. We should also look at the shape of this diagram that will come out of this function in order to see the difference. Now, you can see this diagram is like reverse to what we saw earlier. As you can see that the first segment of the diagram is increasing at an increasing rate, whereas in the previous diagram, which was following those conditions, it was increasing at a decreasing rate. Now, looking at the second segment, it is increasing at a decreasing rate, whereas in that diagram, it was increasing at an increasing rate. So, you see, the, the rates of decrease or increase, they have basically, or in this case, the rates of increase, they have been reversed once the parametric restrictions are reversed. The final comment about this cubic cost function is that we can decompose any cost function, which is cubic in nature in this case, into two parts. As per the theory, cost is composed of two word, two components. One is the fixed cost and the other is the variable cost. And fixed cost is independent of the level of output 
and it should not contain the term of q. Here, this is that term which is independent of q and free of q. So we can say this is the fixed cost component of the total cost. Whereas the remaining part, it contains the terms of q and definitely they should be called as variable cost and we can write q as, uh, as an independent variable to show that variable cost depends upon the level of output. So this is how we can decompose any cubic cost function as well.